Dear Mark, Presidents, Prime Ministers, Excellencies, dear friends. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to make a few remarks. After I have heard the speeches today, we'll come up with an old story. For 200 years in Europe, we made the nation state a god. A god which was always ready to do war against the neighbor. With the catastrophes of the two world wars at the beginning of the last century. And the Schumanns, the Adenlovers, and the Gasparis and others made a big cultural change as they decided not to use history anymore for looking to that what they can get back, why the other is wrong, why I am right, why treaties has to be changed because they were unfair. The coal and steel community just decided leave everything as it is every border as it is, let every country be as it is, and do not talk anymore about a change. And at the same time, combine the coal and steel industry in order to make every country unable to prepare for war, which was at that time the important industries. It was not done because of economic interests. It was done to enable the nation state to prepare for war. That is the idea of the European Union. And it had worked. When I look into my country, which was very good in preparing wars and to losing it, I must say, at the German-Danish border, where f several f f wars were fought, nobody remembers that. Even in a Polish-German border is that the case, despite sometimes the governments who have not understood it. Elsa Lothringia changed between 1871 and 45 four times nationality. You see a monument in Strasbourg where a mother is staying there with her two dead sons, but one in a German uniform and another in a French uniform, to show the stupidities. And this has worked. And the younger generation and the old European member states do not even know anymore what was the past. And I think this general idea, this cultural change to look into history, to use history, it should not happen again, and not to come to the result, I have this historical right, I have to defend ethnical minorities, I need uh, certain countries under my power in order to have my good safety feeling. When we use these three points, I can name you 100 points in Europe where we can wage war today. These are the three points by Russia. And I think we have to understand that again. This way, this dramatic cultural change to see history is a real miracle. And I have sometimes the feeling that even some candidate countries have problems to understand that. Because it means progress for everyone, especially for our citizens. And peace becomes an impossible. And the whole development of the European Union, with the internal market, the customs union, the monetary union, were used to combine the interest in that way 
that you cannot run away anymore. Helmut Kohl has once said about the Monetary Union, which was not very uh, popular in Germany, because the German mark was invented before the German new state was founded. It was a symbol of the new Germany. He gave it up and he said, it's very simple. When you put the X into a pen to make a scrambled egg of that, then nobody will be able to put this egg back into an egg. Therefore, he told me that very often, to make keep Europe together, even in a financial crisis. Because of that, the Europeans were forced to keep together. And we see now the example of Greece, which was sad that they are not able to survive al alone and what they do, it's a catastrophe. Now Greece is one of the most successful countries. It's a growth rate of 3%. A woman said 10 years ago, Greece will never marry a competitive. They have a higher export development than Germany because of this type of policy. And I hope that this will be discussed also within the groups of, mem of candidate countries. It's difficult for me, who was grown up under Adenauer and Kohl's time, to understand also sometimes debate in this part of the world. I have tried it several times to explain to me the Bulgarian point of view and the North Macedonian point of view, this historical language questions and so on, nobody was able to make me understand that. And we just do not understand it intellectually. And, uh, and I think such debates against this cultural change to see in history, which I mentioned before. And we come to the broader Europe, and Ukraine. This European Union, which is based on common interest, combining interests, common values, rule, rule of law, independence of the judiciary and democracy, and the media freedom, these are the values within, make borders unimportant. It doesn't matter anymore in which side of the border you live or work. Therefore, I hope that soon also Bulgaria and Romania become a member of the Schengen system. Because that is a crucial part in that. That makes war an impossible within the European Union. But we have to see that this European Union must also be able to look to the outside worlds and to its interests to defend these values. And here we come to another point, which I can understand, but I think it's wrong. When this European Union wants to survive in this global all of its attentions, it must get a, an effective decision-making system. When the European Union would be enlarged with all the candidate countries, we would have 37 member countries. With the veto system in foreign security defense policy, finished. It means deadlock. But it's often, very often now over. Therefore, it must be a readiness to come to an effective decision making process. Otherwise, if that not works, sometimes you see it already, the French, the Brits, the Germans, and a few others will cooperate and preside over the smaller countries. In the past, it was so that the four or five so-called European powers over centuries, they decided about peace and war, and decided about borders. And the other countries were playing material. Now they said everyone is the same rights on the same table. And no decision can be taken against the small countries. But then please make it effective. When you want to, when the small countries want to sit there also in the future. This has to be considered. 
For the smaller countries, this veto principle is not a question of strength, it's a question of weakness, because the others will do the business around them. And this debate is not a very good one, and I think we heard it already of some speeches, also for example from my chancellor, that enlargement and the form of the European Union belong together. I was in the enlargement round 2004-2007 the main rapporteur of the European Parliament. And at the same time I was the Parliament's negotiator for the Constitutional Treaty and the Treaty of Lisbon. And first was it always clear enlargement and deepening, widening and deepening. And when we do not deepen now the European Union, I fear widening enlargement will not happen. And that is a strong sentence. But Mr. Scholz said the same, with more diplomatic uh, ambitions as I can do that. I was always a parliamentarian, have never learned diplomacy. And I thought it would make more people laugh, but <laughs> And now we come to that point. When we do foreign policy for the peace in this world, we come to Ukraine. The European Union was strong by making sanctions, by keeping together. But it was always a different act and sometimes, as the Ukrainians can tell, too late to less. Especially also when I talk about Germany in this country. But we have this based on something which was in principle signed in the Westphalian peace, which was signed 375 years ago, because I come from that region, I remember that. This has two principles, which were signed by all European nations, by Soviet Union and Russia too, means the sovereignty of nations and the non-violation of borders. These are the basis. And for the first time since the Second World War is this in Europe destroyed by Russia. And here we have to see when we want to keep on that basis a permanent peace and freedom order in Europe. That we have to make sure that Russia has not a success story with that. And this would become a success story, then others will talk the same thing. In Central Europe, we have a nation which talks all of our time about changing the Trianon Treaty which was for that country a un, very unfair treaty. But to change it now, 105 years afterwards, what would that mean for all the neighboring countries? That is against, against the soul of this cultural change to seeing history. So we have also internally a problem. Uh, I believe that these principles, sovereignty of nations, which means that every nation can make its own sovereign choice where to go, and that clears that no border can be changed without the approval of the other country. Again, my last sentence, if we do not fulfill that, then the three points will be violated, as I said in my speech in the beginning. So I believe very much that this should be made clear that this is not just a classical fight between two neighboring countries. It's this very principle of European peace order. We have to see in this question, and uh, I must say, that 
Putin has proved it, not just as he said. I want to uh, get the old empire back and uh, the Ukraine, Russia has uh, in the Budapest memorandum signed a different thing. Uh, the, the, the Ukraine has no right of statehood. It means the same for Belarus and other countries. And uh, he has said in these proposals, in December 21, to the United States and NATO, the Baltic states, Poland, and others have to go out of NATO and demilitarize. Because he needs that part for his security abroad. Near abroad. That would mean that Russia comes close to our borders again, even to the German border. It would mean that other countries will think about it. And I have to sometimes to explain in Germany. Sometimes in Germany, you hear it when people drink beer, they lived always very good. When we had a good relationship to Russia. But when we had a good relationship to Russia, we divided Poland for that, gave in the Hitler Stati uh, 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 Treaty Bessarabia, which is now Moldova, to Stalin, to the West Ukraine, which was not part of the Soviet Union and Russia for a long, long time, the Baltic States, we are still my special. German responsibility, but we did twice. In 18th and 19th century, with the division of Poland and then with the Hitler Stalin, but should not happen anymore again. And therefore, we need this change of culture, the cultural change in seeing history through policy. Thank you very much.